the morning. And in a way, this is a good sequence because now I mentioned in the last slide of the previous talk that OCT is very useful but not the only modality. So let's talk about how we can use multimodal imaging to help us. Okay. Uh, I'm going to concentrate on PCB and uh, AMD and retinal vascular diseases but, and show you some examples. But this applies to just about anything. So for example, glaucoma, you'll be talking about the, it's not only the, you know, you, you can talk about cut this ratios, thinning, notching, but you also want to look at the retinal nerve fiber layer thickness, you want to look at the visual field. So all of this gives you different and complementary information. Okay, so uh, again, acknowledgements. So what is multimodal imaging? As the name suggests, we just use different modes of uh, investigations. Uh, on the same condition, the same eye, with the intention that these will give you different and complementary information. It can either be all at once, or you can do it sequentially based on what you find. So, you know, if, if, you, if I send every patient for all of these tests before my clinic, first of all, they will only get to me probably at the end of the day. Okay, so I might as well just turn, it, turn up for turn up in the uh, evening and work through the night. Firstly, the patient may not be too happy actually. The technicians will probably want to murder you. All right. Um, so, yeah. So, in the interest of your own safety, don't do everything on everybody. Okay. What you might want to do is you might want to choose. So, what you need, but what you need to do is you need to understand what's the most important or useful test. All right, and then go with that. For that condition, what are you? What question? You know, what are you looking for essentially? Okay. If you're the OCT is a very common thing, which is why I put it right on top. But sometimes you may decide, no, I don't want to do that. Too. All right. So, for example, if I want to know whether there's glaucoma, there's actual glaucoma, am I? Well, okay, I'm not a glaucomatologist, but it's my. I think the visual field might be something I want to know, rather than just say say OCT, RF, and LD, uh, thinning, which may or may not is just a range, right? Uh, could be wrong, so, right, uh, but the OCT is useful, but sometimes you will be looking for different things. You may or may not want to do, for example, an autofluorescent, although that's, I would think, very useful. Okay, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and discuss how these come in handy, how are the implications, but sometimes you will have to work around it and think of the symptoms of what's useful. Okay, so, OCT, we, we know this already. Basically, these are some, when you do an OCT scan, you want to look at the qualitative scan, but you also want to think actively what you're looking for. So are there existing spaces? Is there any hyper-reflectivity? Are the bands of the retina, the light layers of the retina, are they disrupted? That's important. Okay. Is there subretinal fluid? Is there any hyper-reflectivity? Any thickening? So as you see, many of, many of these things are seen on this OCT. Okay. So these are just but some examples. Of course, you can further split this up, you know, especially for research. People have described this part, this, this kind of measurement from here to here and all that. So, but qualitatively, clinically, these are probably the things we don't want to look for. Okay. So an OCT is useful, but remember I mentioned it does not give you indication of the image. Okay. It can suggest it, but it doesn't prove that it's the image. Okay. How about fluorescein angiograms? Well, fluorescein angiograms have the advantage of showing the image, all right? Um, you can see, if you do, especially if you do a dynamic cafe, you can see the flow through the, early flow through the vessel, and before, especially before it leaks, all right? But you'll want to be looking for leakage, whether it's from CNV, from microaneurysms in diabetes, or from new, retinal new vessels, okay? So these are just for some, some examples. Block fluorescence gives you some indication. And of course, there could be staining as well. Right? So these are all the things that which you use the fluorescein angiogram for, which is different from the OCT. But for example, sometimes if you want to talk about staining versus uh, cooling or versus mild leakage, what will you do? You go back to the OCT, right? You look at the structure there. So this is an example of multimodal. Just then, then you're applying multimodal imaging already. Okay? So you look at one thing and say, I'm not sure what this is, Let's go back. ICG angiograms, as you know, ICG focuses on uh, its 
less is less leakage from the vessels or coral capillaries, and hence it stays inside and therefore is better for imaging choroidal vessels. How is this useful? Certainly in the CNP lesions, you can see those sometimes. You can see polyps, it's the, as I mentioned, the gold standard for PCP, and uh, even things like RAP can be more clearly seen. Okay. So um, one important thing is to consider co-location. Uh, some devices like spectralis can do this, where they are able, they have got two uh, scans, and so the spectralis can do two scans simultaneously. You can do an OCT and an FA, and I'm not sure you've seen this, so there's two images that appear side by side on the same image, and when you put your cursor over one, you can see the corresponding point. So you say this is where the leakage is, for the OCT show. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's one option. Or you can do it for the FA and ICG. Any, any, I think most combinations are possible. All right, so this is one consideration. Um, another consideration is the use of uh, confocal uh, scanning data technology. Just to <coughs> briefly explain on that. So if you, if you were to use a flash angiogram, the light passes through the optical media and is reflected from the macula. Let's say that's their area of focus. But it also gets reflected from the structures in front as well as behind. So choroid, spera, all right? So there's scattered light, all right? So that's what happens when you do a flash in your record. And so you're, you're getting overlapping layers of the third aspects. Now, confocal scan laser technology has pinholes, which basically limit the light passing through to a certain plane. So in this case, it's focused on that particular plane which you have to focus on, or your lecture has to focus on. Light from that plane comes back, and it is passing through this other pinhole, which is aligned so that it will be allowed through to the photodetectors. But light from other planes that are <coughs> left for sphere will not get fo focused through that pinhole, and hence it's blocked. Right, so how does this work? You see, uh, light from the retina, which is what you're interested in, gets directly reflected, goes through. And as I mentioned, you could get scattered light, but if you have a confocal aperture, it blocks all the other light, except what you want. Okay, so you get a clearer view. But remember, the limitation of that is that it's limited to that narrow plane. So things outside of that may be missed. Let's see how this is applicable to uh, AMD, something that's very common, right? So when you look at autofluorescence, you can see something like this, um, and you realize that it's not normal. To be aware, of course, that depending on the quality of the image, sometimes you you know it's all it's all shades of grey actually. Now I know they have got quant they started doing some quantitative measures of autofluorescence, but in your typical device, they're still qualitative, which means if you just get a dark patch. It may not mean that anything is wrong, it just means that the mix was not well taken. Right? But if you do look, the dark areas in abnormal locations are usually dead puppy. Why? Because there's no lipopaskin that blocks the uh, autofluorescence auto from there. Right? If it's sick or unhealthy tissue, there's increased lipopaskin accumulation, therefore it appears brighter. Uh, but however, bruises can also appear bright. Laser scars appear. So is it, is it a laser scar? Is it atrophy? I'm not sure. And of course, even normal blood vessels will, will appear dark. So of course, you must know what's normal. Okay? But this is where autofluorescence is useful. It gives you some indication. But you may not quite see it on other modalities. Okay? Fluorescein angiograms, of course, show leakage, as I mentioned earlier and that's quite useful. You, the, the type of leakage uh, which we can look for, uh, looking for CMB lesions. But let's talk about PCD. Um, I mentioned already earlier the diagnostic criteria for PCD, but I would reiterate that I feel that if you want to have a definitive diagnosis of PCD, you would require to use ICG. And so um, remember that this is how, auto, how multimodal imaging can help you. If you look at the color funders photo, frankly, looking at this one, I can tell it's PCD already. You see orange nodules, you see a large PED, right? More orange nodules here, and 
So, you know, clinically, I'm quite sure, but to be, just to be, go through the proper process, we did ICG, and what did we find? We did polyps and a branch of vascular network. Notice we don't really see a branch of vascular network on the colour map. Earlier, I mean, I, I, I know this is probably an extreme, not quite the same thing, but uh, how, do we, how do we know this is not, we discussed how do we know, know that this is not non-perfusion. Firstly, uh, it, it extends uh, past the layers, but it's non-perfusion is usually more within certain boundary. But also if you correlate the colour fungus photo, you can see that there's a very large area of subretinal hemorrhage here, and, and this corresponds to the block policies over here. <coughs> However, you can see some areas of leakage as well, which is probably the location of the polyps. Right, um, and of course, if you do, if you can see the branching vascular network quite clearly, some of them are quite large, but other abnormal vessels are quite fine. This is where confocal scanning laser technology is helpful, um, because what happens is that you are seeing blood vessels only from specific layers, Hence, this makes the BPM clearer. If you were doing a flash angiogram, you have all the vessel layers overlapping, and you might miss, you might not see it so clearly because you're trying to discern something from the whole mass of uh, vessels. Okay, but let's look at this and see how. Let's look at some examples of how um, how multimodal imaging can help us. So, what do we see here? This is the ICG angiogram. You see something right here, right? So. Who thinks this is a polyp? No one? But right. Okay. So, so I mentioned earlier that not only the bright and ICG is a polyp. Okay. So what, how do we tell? Well, what if we look at the FDA leakage? Something there this early? Right. So it's a CSR. If you look at the OCT, you see subretinal fluid. Yes, it's a bump in RPE. That's the, probably the leaking point on the CSR. So that's a very common finding. So you can see how, in this case, uh, doing different modalities have helped us. Of course, there are ways to tell on this. First of all, this will not be very nodular. Uh, on this one, first of all, not nodular, um, and there are other features. For example, I don't see a branching vascular network around it, and so on. So. But this is important, not everything that's right is a polyp. Okay, how about this one? So we see the hemorrhage. Okay, can't really see much. ICG shows some things. Possibly some leakage here, or pulling. <laughs> Who thinks this is a polyp? No one. No one. Big leakage of lasers. Well, it could be, right? It could be. It could be suggestive, and if it's, it certainly looks kind of like roundish. Oh, it's nodular to you, doesn't it? Right. But what does? What, what do we? It's a, actually a rat. This is another example. But yeah, if you look at the OCT you can see the actual lesion is inside the retina, so it's intra-retinal. Okay. So this brings up another point. What, this is a stereo pair disc, this is why the two images. All right. <coughs> if you use a stereo pair, you will see that this lesion is actually superficial. It's actually within the retina. So, and of course, you can, you can use the stereo pair, you might have a good stereo pair, and, but the OCT comes in helpful. Okay. And of course, you can also look at other packets. Um, we don't have a good video of this one, but essentially you can see fill from the retinal circulation and then create your vein. So all of these things help you to discern and differentiate uh, easy, uh, polyp from a rat. How about this? So we see whitish lesions on ICG. Some of them may have a bit of a halo around it. A lot of polyps. Yeah. 
it's a microenvironment. So microenvironment do appear like CG as well. So, and you look at it, well, who knows, you know, could it be something small? Again, an OCT may help you, right? Because it's a specific change, like intra-retinal, right? Uh, and sometimes you can even see the microaneurysm there, which you need to correlate with. But certainly the RP looks pretty flat for me, okay? So it's a nice to be a problem in this case, right? Of course, you might say, well, you know, yeah, but looking at it, it's small, blah, blah, blah. If I look at the color funders, I can see microaneurysm. It's quite lovely. It's true. That's true. True, but um, you'd be surprised. I have been referred to cases like this and say, please do a PDT on this case. Then. Nope, it's not doing it. <laughs> but it was for right? anti VHS are fine. Right? So, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, doing PDT is like using a, I don't know, a, a bomb to kill an ant or something. Right? So, but you know, this is how it can be helpful to you. So, here's another example where you see on the infrared image a very nice. Pigment epithelium detachment, right? It's very nicely shown. And some mockering here, which we, we don't see, we're not very sure about what it is. On the fluorescein angiogram, you see a bit of pooling, perhaps a bit of leakage. But on the ICG, that's when you see a bit of some lesions there, which could be small polyps. Okay? And in this case, uh, so it also allows us, using multimodal imaging, if you look at this, might think, well, this whole area may be abnormal. How do we know that there's something here, right? But, and on the fluorescein, it just looks like pooling, I agree. But are we going to treat all of this? No. It's all of this leakage. And I think you will see in some cases where the leakage on FA may be something. Is it? Is it not leaking? Right? We can't entirely be sure. But when we do an ICG, then we see, yes, this may be the feeding vessel, but this is the main area, the main culprit. And so it led to the decision to do a PDT only on that spot. And this is what happened to the large PD after one, one PD came down. Okay. So I mentioned OCT and geography, and I, so I think we've um, you know, already gone through that. So, but realize that OCT and geography is the newest tool in our armamentarium, and frankly, it's the newest toy as well, isn't it? So um, it's certainly something that will change how we do multimodal imaging. Okay. And um, there was a discussion earlier. How much will it replace FA? And, and, I, and I just reiterate, I don't think, I think, to, at least in my practice, very little right now. But in the future, who knows? Probably it will get more. Okay. I'd like to talk a bit about multicolored imaging um, because this is something that's relatively, I think, un, un, not used as commonly. First of all, you have to have a high level in it. There are other devices that do multicolor, but slightly differently. But let's just focus on one and just see how this may be helpful. What it does is it uses confocal scan uh, imaging and it uses three different wavelengths the blue, the green, and the infrared. And it can produce three simultaneous images as well as combine this into a composition. Now, this is not a color, so it looks a bit different from a typical color from this photo, right? It feels a bit off. So it's not a true color image, it's what we refer to as a pseudo color image. Okay? So essentially, these are the wavelengths. Uh, don't bother memorizing those. Not, not that we can change it, right? But um, so why is this so? Because this is it enables us to view structures at different layers. And the theory is that the wavelengths are better suited to view different layers. How is this so? So for blue reflectors, it's more superficial. We're looking for things at the in vitro retinal interface, right? Uh, ERM, for example. The green is in between. We're looking for retina. So especially with hemorrhages and all that, the green, and also because of like a red tree, you see dark patches on the green image. And for the infrared, it's penetrate deeper, so we're looking for the RPE forward. So these are some examples, very dramatic images. Okay, and we'll just, so you can see an epiretinal membrane. Remember this is a pseudo color image, so that's why it looks kind of different. Even, and the clue is an optic disc. I haven't seen an optic disc that looks this green. It is, I mean, I'll send it either to neuro ophthalmology or glaucoma, but. Glaucoma. Uh, glaucoma, okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, anyway, but, anyway, but the retina things. <laughs> right. um, I mean, I, uh, the glaucoma guys, anyone here in oh, glaucoma, by the way? But I mean, they, they don't quite appreciate, yeah, yeah. they don't quite appreciate what I say, but, uh, you know, I, I always like to say, the, us retinal people have a blind spot for the optic disc. They weren't very chill here. 
Uh, and those of you who know my institution know that my former head and head are both from glaucoma. So, uh, so I'm clever and move up to the world's glaucoma. So, uh, this is a pigment epithelium detachment. You notice that, first of all, you can see some, mod, some different uh, layers there. So, and also it appears green. Okay? Why is this so? Because it's raised and therefore it's stop pushing into the and it appears when it's green, when it's thickened and raised, uh, it appears greenish and appears. Right? So again, this is not what you would expect to see on, on, the, true, on the clinical examination or on true uh, color by lips. And something we need to get used to. So pseudo-reticular drusen as well. You can see it more clearly. And even choroidal fold. Right? So very uh, nice images which you can. But of course, I grant you, some of these you can see just by looking. You may not need this, but it may provide you information. And, and it makes for nice slides. Okay. Um, so you can also, ah, so uh, glaucoma uh, says what? So that they don't feel left out. Okay. You can actually see uh, nerve fiber layer defect uh, here, right? Uh, on the normal nobby color, right? And especially uh, useful if you use the uh, red free detail. Okay. okay, quite nice. And here's a case where you take the optic disc using a fungus camera and you might see already some uh, new vessels at the disc as well as red fraction band. But it's a lot more dramatic uh, and more clear on a multicolor image. Okay, and just to compare, just to give an illustration of the color. So you can see for diabetic macular edema, again, because the unitive is a bit greenish, you can see the microelements. So here's where OCT comes in helpful. And you can see the different layers, but notice that some of the hemorrhages appear blocked, especially the green <coughs> and the blue. But you don't, well, you are actually a blue skin on a red as well, but not always so. So you need to know what you're looking for. So here's a case of proliferative ER. And again, uh, where again, <coughs> remember, and notice that these are two images that are combined. Okay. So this is a 30 degree view, but again, remember that for DR, RBO, rectal vascular diseases, these are uh, usually much wider in terms of whole retina. So you can see this is where an angiogram will come in helpful. Okay. Right retinal vein occlusion, again, you can see very nicely the difference between the superior retina that was affected and the inferior retina. Um, and you can even see evidence of uh, AV nipping here. So, again, very clear illustration of images. And here's a case where you can even pick up new and few vessels at the margins between the area of PRP compared to the rest of the retina. Pro probably, well, of course, you probably just top up the laser, or I'm not sure, well, you're going to give anterior an jabs, for example. But, um, <clears throat> Obviously, if you want to confirm is there any area of ischemia you missed, this is where you might want to do either conventionally a policy angiogram or an OCTA that will help you to pick up. But at least this gives you an indication. And you can see how they appear slightly different on the different images. The new vessels are very clear on the green. Actually, you can, you can see on the blue, but not so convincing on the infrared. So, Remember, if you're going to use multicolor, make sure you, you need to be very clear what you're looking for and to interpret the different uh, layers, or at least all go for the composite. Okay. All right, so I think hopefully I've given you a bit of an overview of multimodal imaging, but essentially by using different modalities, it increases the diagnostic capabilities. It helps us to uh, provide different information, complementary information, that's important. There's no point doing the same thing and showing, you know, just, just to find the same finding. What you need to do is you need to decide on the combination is, that is most suitable for that condition, okay, or whatever you're looking for. Ask yourself, will I start, what will I start with? All right, it may well be an OCT, fine. And then if I find something, do I need something to complement that? Is there something that, or if I find something on OCT, then what else do I need to confirm? And then go from there. And obviously it's, new and exciting with the new devices like OCT and multicolor. But I will say, actually, this is nothing new to medicine. I mean, in, in 
just in other fields of medicine as well. MRI, the CT scan, why do we do one and not the other? Ultrasound scan, x-rays, all right? It all depends on the condition and the implication. So multimodal imaging is really no different. It's just knowing how to deploy the tools available. Okay, right, I think that's what I have to share for this morning. Uh, thanks very much. Any comments, questions?